Hello everybody, Mulberry here. Today I want to show you something pretty cool. This is the CIE Lab color space represented with Minecraft blocks. So the CIE Lab color space is a uh, basically a way of representing colors um, similar to you know RGB or HSV, but the important property of CIE Lab is that a given numerical change corresponds to a similar perceived change in color which means if you map the three values, L, A, and B, to the X, Y, Z position in a, you know, three dimensions, what you end up with is the distance between blocks representing how similar uh, those blocks are. So, for example, these two blocks here, uh, their average color is very, very similar because they are very, very close together. Right, whereas uh, this this block and this block uh, are further apart, and so therefore they have uh, more of a, a difference between them. Right, so that's pretty cool. Um, just to explain the mapping, right? So you have the L, A, and B values. L here represents lightness, um, which you can see mapped onto the x-axis here. So towards the uh, left here, you have the lighter blocks, and the further right, you get the uh, the darker the blocks are. Uh, then there's also the A component, um, which represents red slash green in the CIE lab color space. So you can see, uh, and that's mapped to Y. So you can see the further up we get, the more red it is. So you have your reds and your purples, whereas the further down it is, the, uh, the more green. So you get your turquoises and your, and your greens. Uh, and then the B component is mapped to the, uh, the Z axis here in game. And the B component in CIE lab corresponds to blue and yellow. So you can see to the left here, uh, these blocks are more blue. So you have blues and purples and light blues. On the right here, these blocks are more yellow. So you have your greens, your yellows, and your reds. Uh, and what's really cool about, uh, well, there's multiple things that are cool, but one of the things that's cool about mapping blocks this way is that you can kind of see where, where the gaps are, right? You can get an intuition for how uh, the blocks in Minecraft are spread out. So, you know, for example, you can see that there, there's a lot of kind of these mid grays over here. You can see there's a lot of very, very uh, bright blocks. You can see there's uh, quite a few yellows, quite a few reds. Um, there's kind of like a missing area here, right? Um, so there's not really too many uh, grayish blues. There's the blue terracotta here and the light blue terracotta. Uh, but there's uh, not a lot in between here. So that's obviously uh, quite interesting. Uh, obviously, the darkest block over here is going to be the black concrete, uh, which is what the walls here are made out of, so it's a bit hard to see. And uh, the lightest block down here, I believe, is snow. Uh, now, one thing I should mention is that this is uh, this is only including solid, um, full blocks that are uh, non-transparent, so, uh, you know, Transparent blocks are not included and kind of like half blocks, stairs, uh, the rest of those are also not included. I think in total, this is, yeah, 362 blocks uh, that you can find here, um, which is pretty nice. Uh, the other really th uh, neat thing about representing blocks or, or having blocks like this is that it makes it very easy to create palettes for, for building out of. Uh, like, for example, if you want to make a palette that goes from yellow to green over here, all you need to do is essentially draw a straight line and get the blocks along the way, right? So, for example, let's um, let's start grabbing blocks. So, we grab yellow wool here and yellow concrete powder, um, horn coral, sponge, wet sponge. Um, there's a bit of a, a gap here between the wet sponge and the green. Uh, which way do we want to go? Maybe we should go... Maybe let's go down this way to lime concrete powder and then lime concrete. And so, you know, as you can see there, I could just fly through this thing and uh, get a, uh, create a palette very, very easily, right? It's a very visual thing, right? And you can see the palette that we end up with is uh, very, well, okay, please uh, stop doing that. Let me turn this on real quick. What was that, the horn coral? You can see the palette we end up with is, is very convincing. It's a very convincing uh, gradient from yellow to, to green here. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously there's, there's tools online that can generate palettes for you, but being able to, to fly through and, you know, specifically pick out the blocks that you want. Um, you know, for example, we, we ignored the lime glazed terracotta here cause we didn't, we didn't like that block. Um, 
you know, makes it very, very easy to generate uh, very high quality palettes. Uh, let's, for example, do another example. Let's go from red to, say, purple here, right? So we have a uh, red here, and let's jump down to... I'm only going to do blocks that are, uh, have the same texture on all four sides here as I'm creating this palette. Again, there's kind of a gap here, so we're going to have to dip more into the blue here. Uh, and again, quite a big jump here, but it's okay. We'll do block of lapis, and then let's go to the wool here, and then let's go to the purple concrete. So we've kind of just did like a, an arc like this, right? Uh, which is fine. And if we place down these blocks, you can see we end up with a pretty nice uh, gradient across here. Of course, there's um, some gaps in the middle here, right? As we saw, as we flew through, um, there were some uh, big jumps we had to make, uh, which corresponds to a, um, you know, a, a large uh, perceived change in color. But, uh, you know, that's all right. The important thing is that, you know, you can you can visually see that, right? Like, you can visually see that there's a, a, a large jump here. Uh, you can also just make a, a grayscale palette. So let's go ahead and go from gray concrete. And let's, just, again, it's the exact same process. You just fly through here and you pick up blocks um, that you like the look of as you go. Yeah, so here we have infested stone bricks and stone bricks. So let's just, uh, let's just do stone bricks. Uh, let's do stone. Uh, yeah, and the way that this generator works is it, is it like it'll offset the um, the position here if it if it encounters uh, two of the same thing. So that way it does still include every single block. Uh, and anyways, as we flew through there, we've created uh, this grayscale uh, this grayscale palette here, uh, which looks pretty good. Uh, I'll do one last palette example. So let's try to do a gray to orange here, right? So let's start off with gray wool, and then we'll go gray concrete powder. Maybe let's go to cyan terracotta. Then we'll jump to acacia wood here. Um, now, I don't really like any of these blocks in here. I could use the copper bulb. Uh, maybe let's just jump straight to the mud bricks here. And then we'll go to the terracotta. Let's go to the stripped acacia wood. Let's go to the smooth red sandstone. And I guess let's end up here on the orange concrete. And just by flying through the world here, I've created a gray to orange palette. So yeah, um, pretty cool uh, representation of Minecraft blocks uh, using the CIA lab color space. Um, not only does it allow you to kind of visualize the position of every block relative to each other in terms of uh, their perceived, uh, you know, difference in color, but it also allows you to easily create palettes for building simply by flying through the world, which I think is fantastic. Anyways, um, oh yeah, one last thing I should mention is that uh, how I made this. So I wrote essentially a, um, uh, I added an operation into Axiom. So uh, I guess in a newer version of Axiom, um, I'll include the default vanilla one here as a uh, dot scam in the description of this video. But if you want to make your own uh, one of these, um, you know, and you can you can select whatever dimensions you want here. Uh, you can use the feature in Axiom, which will probably be included soon. Um, and uh, the cool thing about uh, generating it yourself is that if you have a texture pack on, um, it will take into account the textures in the texture pack. And also, if you have any uh, you know, custom mods with custom blocks, um, it'll also be able to uh, take those into account. But uh, that's enough about that. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. I will uh, see you all later. Bye-bye.